Ooh, mm. I see. I've got an issue with the color green. Winter was the worst winter of my life. I'll be honest. We weren't massive fans no. of the food, were we? I would genuinely say that the <laughs> were a little bit harder than the I'm Nico. And I'm Jack. And welcome to another podcast. Hey, we're right here in central Beijing again. We found another beautiful canal. Yes, we are in between Lama Temple and Angding Men. And I bet you can probably hear the cascadas, are they called? Cicadas. Cicadas, yeah. They're pretty loud, so we're going to try and talk over them. But apart from that, it's really peaceful and very beautiful around yeah, here. Yeah, what a beautiful summer's evening, eh? Yeah, absolutely lovely. So what are we talking about today? Oh, well, some might say it was a little controversial, the topic today. I love a controversial topic. <laughs> There's nothing like ruffling a few feathers, watching the comments fly in. Yes, I'm sure if you're from China, you have probably got a side. And today we're going to talk about the northerners versus the southerners. Oh, that's super interesting. And I think actually as British people, we're quite familiar with this because in the UK, we actually have like a north-south divide. Yeah, we do. What do you think are some of the differences between like the north and south of England to get started? Well, I'm from the north of England, pretty much as far north as you can get. So to me, you're a southerner. I'm a southerner, really? Yeah. Well, yeah, you're from south of where I'm from. Fair enough. I'm actually from dead center of the UK. And I think everyone in the south of the UK probably thinks, or south of England thinks, I'm probably a northerner as well. Yeah, probably. So you're probably on the fence. Yeah. You could probably relate to a few things from both north and south. I personally think that northerners are a lot more friendlier than southerners. Yeah, I would agree. Like if we go to your hometown, everyone says hello mm -hmm. and they're like everyone's super friendly. Yeah. Whereas I feel like in the south, maybe people have a bit of a reputation for maybe being a little bit more standoffish. Yeah. Um, and also like a little posher, maybe a little bit more stiff upper stiff English upper. lip. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, that's also because there's a bit of a wealth gap as well. You know, the Southerners are known for having a little bit more money than us Northerners. A lot of that kind of revolves around London. And I think actually a lot of people who travel to England only ever, ever go to London. So yeah. that's all they kind of really know. Come to the North, guys. It's great. There's so <laughs> many good Northern cities and the food's a lot different, too. Yeah, like you get things in the north that you don't even get in, well, even where I'm from in the middle. Yes, well, I mean, we just mentioned something there, so let's start with food. What's kind of your like overlying impression of the, the general differences between north and southern food in China? I feel like northern food is a lot heartier. Yeah. Um, you get a lot maybe like stronger flavors of, of meats and um, there's a lot more noodles. Yeah, it's well. very like carb based, right? Yeah. And I think that's like a lot to do with what you can grow here. So mm -hmm. like you typically grow wheat in the north and in the south, it's typically more rice. So like yes, if definitely. you go to restaurants, you normally get rice. Even if you get noodles in the south, obviously it's normally rice noodles. Yeah. And I think the flavors are a little bit more delicate in the south. I would agree, actually. Like when we went to places like Anhui mm -hmm. or even like Cantonese food, like there's a lot of the time they can be just yeah it's quite like delicate flavors that dance on the tongue that being said there are some pretty spicy southern <laughs> cuisines <laughs> as well yeah that's for sure and like because you can grow a little bit more in the south i would say that it was maybe a little bit fresher also i think from my experience as well that i think that it's slightly sweeter in the south yeah i would agree actually when we were living in nanjing i'll be honest we weren't massive fans no. of the food were we but i do prefer the food in maybe a little bit more southern places like i've enjoyed the food in guangxi i've enjoyed the food in yunnan and the Ooh, flavors yeah. are slightly more like slightly yeah. more um like east asian okay big question which do you prefer, northern food or southern food? Ooh, that's so difficult. I would say generally northern, but I like a lot of dishes from both. So ideally, I'd have a little bit of both in every single meal. What on about you? I feel like you've got strong feelings. Always on the fence, aren't you? Always on the fence. Yeah, for me, I would probably say I generally prefer northern food. I love noodles. I'm pretty pretty carb heavy love my carbs and there's a lot of like meaty dishes which are pretty hearty here and they remind me of home great for winter as well like for the long yeah. cold winters like <clears throat> having those kind of hearty dishes like lamb stews and mm. things like that that's love what it. you need right that is exactly what you need and that is a big difference because the north of china is so 
much colder. Oh, than it the is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. I mean, like northern winters are absolutely freezing. Like it gets sub, sub, sub zero. Yeah. But you do still get good summers as well. And I would say, like, I like the fact that like the climate's a lot drier. You seem to get proper seasons. And yeah. As long as, like, I feel like Beijing's a good mix for us. I think once you go like into Inner Mongolia yeah. or like to Harbin or somewhere, then it gets super cold. Maybe a bit too much. Yeah, I can just about bear the cold here because like we have heating but the summers the summers are dry but they do get really hot but in the south it's so wet and humid and oh we I just do not cope well do with cope well with humid that. weather i'm not sure anyone does but i think foreigners particularly really struggle with the humid weather you get in the south that's for sure yeah and obviously i did just mention there about heating now i don't know if you know this but in China, once you get, is it below the Yangtze River? I think it's below the Yangtze. I, I'm not entirely sure. I think it's below the Yangtze, yeah. People don't have heating. Yeah. Isn't that mad? It's just like an arbitrary line and no apartments have heating. So when we were in Nanjing, oh. our apartment was just absolutely freezing the whole time. Oh my God. That Nanjing winter was the worst winter of my life. Yeah. We couldn't even shower in the morning because it was like we had to wait for the house to warm up because it was all tiled. Yeah. Obviously, as it's a lot colder here in the north, I would genuinely say that the northerners were a little bit harder than the southerners. Yeah, I think they're like, I would say like northern Chinese are quite like brash. Mm -hmm. um, they're like very like, like kind of a little bit like louder, harder, like strong willed, I would say. And that's kind of the reputation you get here in China as well. Whereas like southerners are like a little bit more reserved, calm. And my Chinese tutor actually told me, because she's from like the north of China, in Mongolia, that when she went to university in Changchun, they had a load of students from the south. Um, and obviously they had communal showers in the dorms and the southern students were just horrified at having to share, mm. uh, go to the shower, shower all together in one room. Whereas like all of the northern students, they didn't mind because, you know, like yeah. here in Beijing, we have communal bathrooms and I feel like people don't care, right? Yeah, people do. I think people care less. Yeah, definitely up here. Another big difference like within the people is actually like the languages they speak mm. or, well, like the dialects and things. Well, Mandarin obviously is the northern for, uh, dialect from Beijing of Chinese. In the south, there are even more dialects. So for example, like something like Cantonese, totally, I cannot understand that. And even when we travel, I find it a lot harder to kind of communicate with a lot of people in the southern southern regions whereas i would say i find it despite their kind of strong accent i find like people in beijing quite easy to understand that being said you do still have languages like mongolian spoken up mm. in inner mongolia and things which is totally different really and that's a little bit like the uk as well i feel like the accents get a lot stronger as you go further north that's true and we often use like a lot of different slang words do you know any slang words that people in the north use compared to people in the south? Yeah, I'd love to learn some of them. Yeah, yeah. teach us some, teach us some. Yeah, I'd love to learn some of them as well. So we talked a little bit about the people, but what about the way that the north looks compared to the south? Well, I would say that like the landscapes are totally different. Yeah. Like, I mean, the north is like obviously because it's a lot drier, like there's a lot of kind of deserts and just a lot kind of like harder the terrain, whereas mm -hmm. like the south is more like quaint and green. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But I really like the rugged landscapes of the north. I find it like super interesting for photography. Like when we went to Inner Mongolia, oh, those yeah. landscapes were absolutely incredible. Yeah, I really enjoy them too. But then also when we've been to southern places as well, they're just so green and so lush. Like when we were just in Guangxi and it's just the mountains are amazing. Oh, so beautiful. I think a lot of people though come to, uh, well, come to the north as well for kind of some of like the kind of cultural stuff, right? Because yeah. like... Oh, sorry, I just got a mosquito on my nose. <laughs> I think a lot of people actually come to the north for like the cultural aspects, right? Because a lot of the ancient emperors of China like had their capitals in northern China. So you had like uh, Luoyang, Xi'an, uh, Beijing. Beijing, right? These were all like the old capitals of, of China. And so there's like kind of that like historic element to it. Well, also the Silk Road, you know, that yeah. was here, like that was in the north, you know, it went all through in Mongolia yeah, yeah. and totally but then like I would say in the south right you have kind of a lot of reputation for like the, the modern economic powerhouse of China so a lot of the cities we've been to are quite developed and like they're like big cities for like uh, mm. like services and things like that a lot of the tech companies are based in cities like Shenzhen right and you even have a lot of people like migrating from the north down to Shenzhen and other, other and Shanghai and places to like work in those industries because I think like the north is 
a lot more famous for its kind of heavy industry, things like coal mining and that sort of thing. Yeah, well, I mean, coal mining, we went to Datong recently and obviously that is a city transformed. That was really renowned for it, but it also had these amazing architectural pieces like yeah, grottos totally. and things. But before we get to the present day, we have to go a long way back to properly understand Datong's journey. Okay, so landscape wise, yeah. Which do you prefer, north or south? I, uh, I would say maybe north. I <laughs> uh, see. I've oh. got an issue with the color green. I don't like photographs with lots of green in it. Um, I just, I'm just not a big fan of the color green. <laughs> I quite like kind of the the rugged look. And I would say for me, like Inner Mongolia, just the tones there were just mm. out of this world. And we haven't really been to the west yet. And I mean, ah. Oh. It just looks so amazing. Well, maybe that's going to be the next video we could do is East, East versus West. West China. Because obviously, Ooh. like, the no north and south aside, just generally the, the whole of the East of China is a lot heavier populated, a lot more economically hey, 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 developed. Hey, 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 stop ruining the next podcast, Okay, guys. we'll save that for next time. We'll yeah, save let's that for do next that time. next time. Okay, so, guys, are you from the North or from the South of China? Also, leave comments and let me know other differences you know we've only just touched on it and we don't want to offend anyone either like i'm sure you all agree i'm going to be super fascinated to see the fights kicking off in the comments i think this could be a feisty one so <laughs> yeah looking forward yeah. to that one guys and the last question which is better north or south oh <laughs> and on a controversial note anyway i think it's feels like it's kind of getting dark here yeah i reckon we should go food. let's go eat some food let's go eat some northern food Oh, let's go eat some other food here in Beijing. Right, guys, as always, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>